In this video, we'll talk about nuclear localization signal and how does nuclear localization helps in the nuclear transport. So nuclear localization signal exists in the proteins which are destined to be delivered inside the nucleus. And this signal is kind of like a targeting sequence for any protein to be delivered to nucleus. So this sequence at a structural level has basic amino acids on both the sides flanked by a, a basic, a, a flanked by a, um, amino acid spacer which is roughly 10 amino acids stretched long. Anyway, these basic amino acids and the spacers are pretty typical. Now the first uh, NLS which was discovered was large T antigen of the SB40 virus. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and biology is fun when you learn with animation. So NLS sequence can be attached to any particular protein. In this case we are going to attach NLS with GFP and GFP containing plasmid would be expressed in the cell. So alongside the GFP, the, the NLS sequence would also be uh, expressed in this particular cell. Now what happens if the NLS is there, then it would take the GFP to the nucleus, right? Because it has the nuclear localization signal right now. Otherwise, it's a cytosolic GFP, so it is expected outside the nucleus. But once analysis is attached and basically imaging is done, one can clearly see then the GFP would be localized into the nucleus and the fluorescence would come out from the nucleus. So this is one of the way to understand the nuclear localization signal itself help in the process of nuclear transport. Now the question is, how exactly NLS is helping in the transport? That is the important part. But before that, let's try to understand why it is important. Imagine we are talking about a transcription factor. Now, if NLS is removed, what is the expectation? Pause the video for two minutes and try to think. If NLS is removed, the nuclear localization would not happen. In contrast, we have just seen that if we put NLS to a cytoplasmic enzyme, it would eventually move to the nucleus, right? So NLS dictates how and when a protein would be delivered to the nucleus. And this protein might be transcription factor, which need to perform transcriptional role. That is why they have to get inside the nucleus. Then there could be, uh, they could be a part of the DNA damage repair machinery because DNA damage repair machinery need to also get the access of the DNA. So that's why they once they are produced in the cytoplasm, they need to get into the nucleus. Sometimes mRNAs need to be exported out of the nucleus as well. So nuclear transport is super important. So now the main player, NLS is actually detected by the protein called importin. As the name suggests, importin imports the protein into the nucleus. So it interacts with the nuclear pore complex and eventually with the conformational change, it allows the protein to get in. So basically importin and the protein complex is now inside the nucleus. Now inside the nucleus, there is a particular GTPase protein known as RAND GTP. It interacts with the protein and the importin complex and free up the protein from these importin. Eventually, RAND GTP exports the uh, importin out of the cell. So now the this particular protein is trapped inside the nucleus and it have to do its job. Anyway, on the cytoplasmic side, there would be gap which exchange, which basically uh, hydrolyzes the GTP and produce GDP. Eventually, there are other proteins such as NTF2 which brings back RAN GDP inside the nucleus. So this is how overall interaction with the NLS and the importin happens which allows the import of any a particular enzyme or transcription factor which is destined to be in the nucleus. So if you want to know more about this kind of RAN GTP and uh, overall nuclear import and export, you can click on the video on the I button. But now in this video, we understood the importance of the uh, nuclear localization signal. So now let's talk about the importance. Now, all this nuclear localization signal, nuclear export and import literally governs how much time a transcription factor or a repair protein would stay inside the nucleus. So because uh, if the particular factor is staying for a long time in the nucleus, it might regulate the transcription for a long time. But if it is thrown out of the nucleus, then the duration of the transcription can be modulated. So this is one important type of regulation. Now let's take a specific example. 
NFAT is a particular transcription factor which is hyperphosphorylated and stays in the cytoplasm. Now, calcineurin is particular dephosphorylase enzyme or phosphatase enzyme that get rid of this phosphate group and this expose the nuclear localization signal marked in red. So the conformation change happen when it, it is dephosphorylated. Now what would happen this particular import signal would interact with importing and take this particular uh, protein complex inside. Now it would be freed up inside the nucleus and it can do its transcriptional role. When calcium is low there would be phosphorylation again and then the nuclear export signal would be exposed. That would take these hyperphosphorylated version outside the nucleus. So this is how calcineurin is kind of uh, transported in the nucleus and out of the nucleus with the help of nuclear import and export signals and specific export and import receptors. So I hope this video was informative. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Our flashcards and notes are present in Facebook, Instagram, also in our website. Please support our channel using Super Thanks. See you in the next video.